Hello everyone, my name is Zach, and I want to make a quick video going over the last two weeks of progress since the launch of PoE Stack. We're going to go over some feature updates, uh, the open source of the project, and future plans. If you have no idea what PoE Stack is, there's a video in the description that goes over the initial release, all the features, and the goal of the project. Uh, the quick overview is just that we track your stash tabs and the state of the PoE economy and use that data to quickly price items and um, help you sell things on the forms or TFT quicker. Here's some of the major additions since last time. Many of these came from the uh, original Reddit thread and from uh, people's suggestions in the Discord. We're going to go over all these in detail. So the first few changes have to do with the uh, new systems we have for tracking economic data and applying it to pricings of items. The first idea here is that you need to get used to these p-values. So a p-value is the percentage of listings that a price falls at. So if you have a p7, it's in the lower 7 percentage of listings. And if you have the p50, you're considering like the bottom 50% of listings. So the P50 is always going to be a higher value than the P7. It's uh, so really all you have to understand is that lower is going to be a lower price and higher is going to be a higher price. Lower is going to show up uh, on the search before higher p-values. But obviously you'll get more money if you sell them at higher p-values. Um, the other thing is that we have these price range profiles now. So if you go into one of your profiles, you can select what p-value you want to use for pricing your items. So usually P10 is the default, it's what we've been using uh, in the first video. If you want to undercut a bit more, you can go down to a lower p-value. If you want to uh, take a little bit longer to sell your items but get more money, you can use a higher p-value. The other big thing to go over is stock-based pricing. This has been a request of many services for a while, uh, but we've got it implemented now. Basically the idea here is that when, when you're uh, selling large quantities of items in PoE, the buyer usually pays a convenience fee to buy a large quantity at once. This is usually especially prevalent in stuff like essences and scarabs. So let's just go take a look at a chart and see how all these options kind of come together. Let's take a look at an essence of hatred. So here's the basic chart. You can see that the, P, uh, the P7 is down here. It looks like it's about three chaos. The P10 seems to be going up a little bit. There's an extra half a chaos in there and then four and five chaos for the higher P values. Um, let's just quickly bring this down to only show the P10. So you can see it's going up a little bit, but really what we're interested in is also adding in a stock range. So let's add in people who have 30 plus. So you can see that the 30 plus line is up here at five and the zero plus line, so all listings, is down here at 3.5. So it seems like there's about 1.5 chaos markup for people who have at least 30. So if you use a traditional pricing app that doesn't take this into account, you're gonna be losing some money on each chaos basically. Sorry, on each essence um, in trade. So we've fixed this by tracking all of that. All you need to do to enable this is head over to your profile and set this option from none to smart influence. Uh, this will make it evaluate how many of each item you're selling you have and look at the pricing data for that bracket. If it, there isn't enough data, it will just fall back and use the regular price. Price overrides. So let's say that you're selling your items and you're looking at the price and it doesn't look quite right. Let's just pretend we're going to sell our compasses here. And I'm looking at this price for enraged, enraged strong boxes, and I'm thinking that it's too low. So we can enable overrides here and just type in a higher price. So let's say that it's actually like 220 on Discord. Put that in, go to the export, select compasses, add in an IGN, copy this, and take a look at that message. We can see that it's now priced them out at 220 chaos each. So just a quick way to let you do some overrides. These are saved locally and they only apply while it's enabled. So if you want to do another export where you don't use them, you just disable it and do another export. Not too bad. Uh, better vary item variations plus uniques tracking. So I've enabled unique tracking. So now you can view all of the unique items that are being tracked. You can check out the price.
price of the original sin this league see how it's going you can see some variations here already uh, obviously there is no six link but you can see that this one is not corrupted and this one is corrupted so let's take a look at the non-corrupted original sin looks like it's going up in price see the quantity of listed and the total valid listings over time uh, you can see a multi-strike is some, an item that has a lot of variations thanks to the anonymous and divergent variations along with corrupted quality and levels um, this type of variation tracking is going to be really useful we're also going to use it to track unique items better uh, a cool example of this would be something like the voices we can create variations for each of the number of passives on the voices cluster and then they will be priced totally independently of each other you can also use this for more simple unique items like just pricing maybe like the brass domes plus five max versus all the other ones income over time tracking if we go to my back to my profile we can see up here you can select between any two of your snapshots and it will calculate the per hour and the total change along with giving you some info about how long that was so this is pretty useful for just seeing um, seeing how much money you're making over time Automatic snapshots, if you go to the profile, you can now configure it to take a snapshot automatically every few minutes, depending on what your setting you like. Uh, this happens on the server side, so you don't need to leave the website open or your computer even on, and it'll just update. Global search, probably already seen this, but uh, you can search for stuff and take a look at it. We've also open sourced the Next.js part of the app. So if you head over to GitHub, again, this will be linked in the description, you can check it out. Uh, looking for anyone who would like to contribute to it, uh, pull requests or just issues. Soon I will make a video showing how to set this up. I might stream this as well, but just developing a simple feature from scratch to give kind of an introduction to how to work with this. Also I'll added a development channel in the Discord. So if you want to discuss any ideas or features you're working on or ask for help, and then um, anyone who gets pull requests approved will get a contributor rank. Uh, next, I'll work start work on open sourcing the rest of the app. This is the backend part later. As far as upcoming features, um, I've been keeping this updated in the Discord, but it's basically just a list of all the features that I would like to work on and features that people have suggested, and I'm adding them in. So if you have ideas, feel free to leave them as comments or join the Discord and post it in the Feedback and Ideas channel. Um, thanks to everyone who left all the supportive and or feedback related comments on the original Reddit thread or videos. Uh, a lot of those ideas are basically what makes up this video. So if you have any ideas, I would love to hear them. Besides that, uh, just looking forward to continuing to make additions to the project. A lot more people than I expected have already started using it, which is great. Uh, yeah. So thanks for everyone for that and hope you guys have a good rest of your day.